Okay, so this time out, we're going to show a very quick, but sometimes frustrating feature for some people using Squarespace for the first time. And we're gonna be removing hyperlinks from our Squarespace website. This is especially important if you're tasked with the job of transferring content from an existing website or from a document you've prepared. And I've got some Latin placeholder text with a couple of links as an example here. We're gonna copy and paste this into a new page on our template website, Hidden Veil Yoga and we're going to strip out those hyperlinks then and also if we get a bit of time have a look at some formatting so first of all i'm going to create a new blank page i'll call it about us okay so i've pressed save and the page is created I first of all need to add a section to the page because we chose blank as an option. And now we can choose one of the pre-existing templates. We can add blank or we can use the old 7.1 classic editor in Squarespace. We're gonna click add blank and we've got one free text block to start with. I'm gonna head back to our Google Doc copy the text, jump back over to the about section, and now press control V, command V on a Mac to paste. Okay, so we can see now that there's some formatting to do. We can also see that the links seem to have been copied in as well. And the way we can find that out is if we click anywhere on the link, I've seen some people will try and highlight the whole word, but it's so easy just to jump off that and select too much content. So the easiest way to work with links is just to click in the middle of the link or anywhere within the confines of the link itself. So any of the underlined section here, and we can see that the link option is grayed out. So first up, by clicking in that word, in this case, I can now click on the link option and yes, it is as simple as that. I just need to click on that remove option. Same again, then further down, click on the text, click on the link button, and once again, remove. Okay, you could save it at this stage, which I'd always recommend if you're new to Squarespace, so you don't end up making a lot of mistakes and having to redo the whole thing again. So save often when at all possible. Next up, I'm going to remove some of the formatting or tidy up some of the formatting here as well. So we've got a heading one at the top, but we'd probably go with a banner, which would have a heading one that's shorter than this. So we could decide to drop this to a heading two or three. Strictly speaking, if it's the second most important headline on the page after the title, which would be heading one, the second most important one would be heading two, naturally. And headings cascade in, so we start with heading one, then we go to heading two, three, four, paragraph one, two, etc. Now we've done that, we can select the start of this sentence and just press backspace to tidy up the formatting. If I go too far, if I go one more again, this is what happens. It assumes, Squarespace assumes, that we want to bring that paragraph back in line as a heading. And if we don't want to do that, we may just have to undo it, go back a step, or another alternative is if you've already saved in the interim and hadn't noticed this, you can just press enter once, and then back to paragraph one or two. I quite like this effect sometimes where we start in with a page title, heading one, then a heading to paragraph one and then feeding into paragraph two finally, especially if we're ending up with more content on our page like this. By the time we add images in amongst it, we've got a really nice rich format to our page. The other thing we can see here is there's an extra space at the top. This happens regularly when we're copying and pasting in from Word documents, Google documents, or existing websites. What you might have noticed I've done there is I changed it to a heading two first, but if I go back one step further, that was a paragraph two, which is the default paragraph size. 
If I was to backspace that heading to it, we can see that the heading 2 has now been stripped out, so we'd have to re-add it. The more you do with this, the more comfortable we become doing these edits. We, we get to see a lot of things by eye, noticing that there's really nice consistent spacing or times where there aren't, things like this. It's just really important to have a bit of a tidy up. One final thing with paragraph spacing is if I was to hold shift and press enter, it'll create a line break. If I press enter, it'll create a new paragraph. If I create a line break and then choose, say for example, this final section here, and I wanted to make that a heading four, it would make everything in that paragraph area a heading. So it changes the entire paragraph to a heading. If I wanted that heading to be separated, I'd have to manually separate them first and then manually change the other text. It may feel convoluted and a little bit messy to start with, but believe me, when it comes to creating clean code and making sure that the browsers can read it properly, this is definitely the best way to go. So there we have it. Our text block, and because we're using the original editor, we can upgrade to a fluid editor at any time. And we can see here now, once updated to our fluid engine, our fluid editor, we can just adjust the width of the text block and then add in other pieces of content accordingly. Might be able to just align it to the middle there, not have such width, so it's just got a little bit more uniform structure. We could add in then a intro banner. Just go with this one for now. Might decide to remove that image and just adjust it up so it fits nice and flush. And there we go. So we've got our main heading, then we've got a content area that's nicely fixed width. And this is where you can really start playing around with it. But the main things we wanted to show you today was how we can successfully copy content in from something like Google Docs or another website and then strip out unwanted links in our content. So we identify them in Squarespace by seeing the underline underneath them and then click anywhere in that link, then go to the remove link option in the pop-up window. Hope that helps. Leave a message, let me know how you get on and I'll see you in the next tutorial. Cheers.